I was born in the key suburb of Cogra, and I didn't know it was a suburb. I thought the world was like that. I thought the world was flat and occupied entirely by these little brick bungalows with a quarter of an acre of ground around them. It seemed to me an idyllic existence even at the time, and looking back on it, I realised it's, it's, it's not a freak of nature, it's a freak of politics. Uh, the, the Australian suburb, not very thrilling, sometimes flat-out banal, but rather wonderful. It was a city that had the attributes of the country. That's what the suburb does for people. And it's, I think it was essential to Australian culture that we never had the really densely populated city. Each little house in its own piece of ground was a little country, and each street was a nation. And the way you had just enough space in order to explore, I think, was, was just crucial. Migration happened all around me. It happened in school, for example, without my realizing its significance. It just never occurred to me that a great world historical event was going on. The people who were essentially refugees from political nightmare were arriving in paradise. And the reason why the Latvian boy was sitting beside me in school and doing startlingly well is because he was hugely motivated because his family had escaped from chaos. And the significance of it, I didn't get. And I think a lot of what the migrants did for us crept up on us, starting with things like food and wine, and then gradually percolating through the entire culture. The intellectual level of Australia went up like this because of migration. And philosophers were arriving on these boats and immeasurably enriching it, there's no question. Migration is the thing that matters in Australian cultural history post-war, no question of it. <laughs> 